Hello, now we will continue our learning on gas well deliverability and we will continue our previous section. So in this, in the previous section, we construct or we do the analysis, the gas well deliverability analysis, and we have this data, we solve it using empirical method and we construct the IPR. Now to complicate matters, we will have VLP, several VLPs, vertical lift performance or tubing performance curves. And we have target of production increase of 10%, right? So first I just copy my previous page here in previous case. So I just copy and make this page or this sheet and we will modify the data with our current case. Okay, so first I will change it. I will change the IPR. I will delete it. Right click, select data. I will call it IPR. And for the X values, I will take it from this empirical sheet, the flow rate. And for the Y axis, we get that from the PWF or the pressure. Okay, so this is our IPR. Let me do the format data series. Use solid line, color it yellow. Okay, so this is our current IPR. And select data. We also change the test. Edit. Series X values, take it from the empirical sheet the flow rate, as well as the pressure. Okay, so those are our four test data points. And now we need to modify the VLP curves. And here, so the, the case is more or less like this. So we already know the deliverability of our gas well. We already create the IPR. We know the absolute open flow. Let's say we want to target production increase by 10% and with minimum allowable tubing head pressure of say 1,500 PSIA. And due to the, this requirement of production target, we need to do work over by replacing the tubing and we have three possible tubing sizes. The first one is 2.441, this one, and the second one is 2.992. And the third one is 3.598 in inches. Okay. And yeah, of course, for each tubing sizes, we have different VLP. So I'm going to put the VLP data. I will erase this existing table. So this should be our data. So you can look at this VLP in this curve. By the way, I want to change the marker. I don't want to use marker. Marker. Marker options, none. Okay. And then, by the way, this in million standard cubic feet per day. So after 10, 15, 20, 25. And the PWF is this one. 2000. And then 2100. 2350. 2650, 3200. Okay, I will take the pressure from that. So the first VLP for tubing of 2.441 is this yellow curve. And then for the second VLP, I'm going to input the data 10. 15, 20, 25. And then the PWF, flowing bottom hole pressure, 7, 
1500, 2050, 2200, and 2700. So this is our second VLP. And then the last one is 15, 20, 25, 30 with bottom hole pressure of this one, 1800, 1920, and 2000. So, Okay, so these are our possible VLPs. All right. Interesting. So let's say our minimum tubing head pressure is 1,500 PSIA. So if the depth is 9,000 feet, and let's say the fluid gradient or the gas gradient, 0 0.003 PSI per foot. So the flowing bottom hole pressure is around this one plus 6,000 multiplied by that, this one. Okay, but this is by the way, the minimum bottom hole pressure. So if we want to target production rate increase of 10%, 10% from, from what? right 10% from what for example let's assume that the normal flowing period is 14000 so for the q normal there is 14000 mscfd so q target should be 10% of that plus that, okay, MSCFD. So this one, we target production rate of 15,400 MSCFD. But as you can see, if we maintain the original IPR and we know the this one, the VLP, we can actually achieve production rate greater than this 15,400. Okay, so you can look at this case from different perspective. The first one, if we know the production target of 10%, 10% from what? And then the second one, when will we do this workover? Is it at the same time or is it several years after the continuous production started? Okay. All right. But yeah, in this case, I will assume that we will do the workover after several years. Okay. Just like this case. So we will construct a future IPR. All right, we will construct a future IPR. Okay, so the future IPR, I will use this one. Let's make a future IPR. Okay, let's say the pressure has been decreased down to 5,000 and then PWF, 100%, 90%, sorry. It 
should be 90 percent or maybe we can do like this 80 down to zero okay all right and then this one percentage multiplied by this one f4 okay and then for this one we will assume that c and n value will be constant so let's borrow the value here okay c i will assume it to be constant 0 0.002 and i will assume it to be constant 0 0.92 and then PWS, let's say 5,000 after several years. So if we borrow this, if we of course maintain the equation, we calculate the absolute open flow right now is this one, C multiplied by PWS squared minus 14.65 squared powered by 0 0.92 and then divided by 1,000 because it is MMSCFT. And then this one, we will use this one, C from this, and then for this PWS squared, we can use this one, F4 minus this one, and then powered by this n f4 okay so now the absolute open flow will be 14000 okay so let's say this is the future ipr and then we will put this future ipr in our here nodal analysis plot select data at future ipr series x here series y the vertical axis okay let's change it to no line no i will use solid line i will color it white and then no marker okay and then or I will color it green instead. Okay. Yeah, so of course the operating rate is the intersection between IPR and the VLP. So we can yeah, do the trial and error, do the sensitivity analysis by changing the reservoir pressure or static bottom pressure until the intersection between the future IPR and the possible VLP occur at 15,400. So now the intersection occur at around 12,000. Okay, so let's say it happens at the reservoir pressure of 15, 5,500. Now the intersection for the first tubing happens at 14,000, not yet. And here, I think we get our winner here, here, 15,300. So at future condition, at future, when the reservoir pressure or PWS is 5,500 PSIA and using tubing of 2.992 inch, all right, the intersection between the future IPR and the VLP gives us flow rate of here. 
8 MSCFD, which is close to this 15,400, which means we achieve approximately 10% of production increase from the normal operating rate of 14,000. So I get this 14,000 MSCFD from this PSS flow. I assume that to be our normal flowing period. So if you want 10% increase, so it should be 15,400. All right, so that will be the justification of what tubing we will use for the production increase. Okay, but again, you can look at this case from different perspective. When we will do the workover, is it now? Is it the year at the same year with our well testing data or is it 10 years later or five years later? Okay, and regarding the production increase, 10%, 10% from what? From which flowing period? From which flow rate? Okay, so if we are not so clear about that, in this case, we use my approach here. Okay, so that's all. I hope this video is useful and enjoyable. I hope you can get something important from here. See you again and thank you so much.